Hi friends, Allie here. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to crochet these Country Cottage fingerless gloves. A few years ago, I designed my Country Cottage mittens, and after I released that pattern, I was asked by a few people to make a fingerless glove version, so here they are. These fingerless gloves work up super fast and are easy to make, especially if you've made any of my other Country Cottage patterns before. If you haven't, be sure to check out my Country Cottage collection, where I have so many more crochet patterns that use this beautiful stitch. These gloves use less than one skein of yarn, and this pattern includes three sizes for you to choose from. I'll be making the medium size in today's video, but you can follow along no matter what size you're making. You can find the free written pattern for the Country Cottage fingerless gloves on my website, theturtletrunk.com, or get the ad-free printable PDF from my Etsy shop and Ravelry. I'll post links to all of those places in the description box down below. Now, if you're ready to get started, let's head over to our size chart and supply list, and let's get making. Here is our size chart. There are three sizes to choose from, small, medium, and large. The instructions on the screen will be in order from smallest to largest, and it's always best to measure the hand first so you know exactly what size will work best for you. And it's always a good idea to check your gauge first to ensure proper sizing. For today's pattern, you will need medium four weight yarn. I'm gonna be using Lion Brand Yarn Wool Ease. For the small size, you'll need about 80 yards to make two gloves. For the medium size, you'll need about 110 yards, and the large size, you'll need about 130 yards. You'll also need a five millimeter or H crochet hook, scissors, and a yarn needle. We're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook and we're gonna begin by making the cuff of the glove. Now you can adjust the size of the cuff to be any length you want. The size small is gonna be about 1.75 inches, the medium is gonna be about 2.25 inches, and the large is gonna be about 2.75 inches, but you can chain as many or few chains as you want to get the length of cuff that you want, or you can just double the length that I have um, to make it a fold over cuff. So for the size small, we're going to chain eight, for the medium, we're gonna chain 10, and for the large, we're gonna chain 12. For row one, we are gonna work one single crochet into the second chain from the hook, and then we're gonna work one single crochet into each chain across. At the end of row one, the small size should have a total of seven stitches, medium will have nine, and large will have 11. Now we're gonna chain one and turn. Now we're on to row two. For row two, we're gonna be working our single crochets in the back loop only. So if you look at the top of your stitches, you'll see two loops on the top. The one closest to you is the front loop, and the one furthest away is the back loop. So we're gonna work a single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch across. So starting in that first stitch, our chain one does not count as a stitch, by the way. So working in that back loop only, we're gonna work a regular single crochet. We're gonna work one single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch across. And you'll notice that since we're working in the back loop only, it's gonna create a little ribbing effect on the front there. So single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch across for row two. At the end of row two, our stitch count is the same, seven for small, nine for medium, and 11 for large. Now we're gonna chain one and turn. And for rows three on, we're just gonna repeat what we did for row two. Single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch across, chain one and turn. So for the small size, you're gonna work a total of 20 rows. For the medium size, you're gonna work a total of 24 rows. And for the large size, you're gonna work a total of 28 rows. So I'm just coming up to the end of my last row for my cuff. So I'm doing the medium size, so I have a total of 24 rows. If you did the small, you should have 20. And if you did the large, you should have 28. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to fold my cuff over, bringing the short sides together. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the last row I worked and into our foundation chain to join the ends. So insert your hook into that last stitch that you worked and then into the corresponding foundation chain like so. And then I'm going to loosely slip stitch. 
So you're just gonna pull your yarn through and then pull it through the loop on your hook like so. Trying to keep your yarn loose. You don't want it too tight or it's really gonna cinch up your cuff right there. So try and keep your stitches loose here. And we're just gonna work one slip stitch into each stitch across, working through the last row we worked and our foundation chain from the beginning. So for the size small, you should work a total of seven slip stitches across. For the medium, you should work a total of nine slip stitches across. And for the large, you should work 11 slip stitches across. Once you reach the end, we're gonna chain one, and then we're gonna be working the hand part of our glove, and we're gonna be working around the top of our cuff. So as I work this first round, I'm gonna be working around this tail end I have here. You can either weave that in now, weave it in later, or just work around it now so that you don't have to weave it in at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work one single crochet into the edge of each row from the cuff, around. So for the small size, you're going to work a total of 20 single crochets around. The medium, you're going to work 24, and the large, you're going to work 28. So as you can see, the ribbing effects, that's two rows between the ribbing. So you want to work two single crochets between each of the ribbings. So I'm going to work that first one right where I had chained one, and then you'll see me working around that tail end there. Something else I want to point out is you want to work your stitches where you have two loops you can work into. You don't wanna insert your hook where there's only one loop or else that's gonna cause holes where you work that stitch. So try and grab spots that have two loops. So, so far I've worked two single crochets. Now I'm gonna move on to the next row and then the one beside it. And we're just gonna work one single crochet into the edge of each row from the cuff all the way around. So for the size small, you're gonna work a total of 20 single crochets. The medium, you're gonna work 24, and the large, you're gonna work 28. I'm just coming up to the end of round one. The small size should have a total of 20 stitches, the medium, 24, and the large, 28. We're gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet of the round and chain two. Now we're on to round two and we're gonna work one double crochet into each stitch around. So yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So we're gonna work one double crochet into each stitch around for round two. At the end of round two, we're gonna to join to the top of the first double crochet with a slip stitch, and chain two. Now on to round three. We're gonna work one double crochet into the first stitch. And then we're gonna front post double crochet into the next stitch. So that's just working a regular double crochet, but working around the front post of the stitch instead of the top of the stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook beside the post of the next stitch, wrapping our hook around the back of it so insert your hook from the front to the back, wrapping around the post of the next stitch. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So now we're just gonna repeat the last two stitches all the way around. So double crochet into the next stitch. And then front post double crochet into the next. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around for round three. Double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next. I'm just coming up to the end of round three. Your last stitch of round three should be a front post double crochet. We're gonna join and chain two. Now we're on to round four. 
For round four, we're gonna work a front post double crochet into the first stitch and then a double crochet into the next stitch. So we're gonna be working our front post double crochet in the double crochet from the previous round and then our double crochet in the front post double crochet from the previous round. So front post double crochet into that first stitch then double crochet into the next. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around for round four. Front post double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch. So I'm just coming up to the end of round four. Your last stitch of round four will be a double crochet. Then we're gonna join and chain two. Now we're on to round five, and this is the round where we're gonna add in our thumb hole. So we are going to double crochet into the first stitch, then front post double crochet into the next stitch, and we're gonna repeat those two stitches for a total of four times for the small size, five times for the medium size, and six times for the large size. So we're gonna work a total of eight stitches across for the small, 10 stitches across for the medium, and 12 stitches across for our large, and then we will add in our thumb hole. So for the small size, once you've worked eight stitches, the medium you've worked 10 and the large you've worked 12. Now we're gonna add in our thumb hole. So we're going to chain four. And then we're going to skip the next four stitches. And then we're gonna double crochet into the fifth stitch. So chain four, skip four, and then double crochet into the next stitch. So that double crochet should be on top of a front post double crochet from the previous round. And then we're just gonna continue our repeat all the way around for the rest of round five. So we just worked a double crochet. So we're gonna front post double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch, and repeat that around for the rest of round five. At the end of round five, your last stitch should be a front post double crochet. Then we're gonna join and chain two. Now we're on to round six. So we're gonna front post double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and we're gonna repeat that until we get to our thumb hole. So that'll be a total of four times for our small size, five times for the medium, and six times for our large. So just front post double crochet in the first stitch, double crochet into the next until we reach the thumb hole. So your last stitch before the thumb hole will be a double crochet. Now working in the back bump of that chain four we had worked in the previous round, we're just gonna double crochet into each chain. So when you look at your chain from above, you see there's two loops there, but if you look on the back of the chain, there's a little bump that sticks out. There's a loop that bumps out on the back. We're gonna work into that back bump, and that's just gonna give us a nice clean edge on the bottom of this thumb hole. If you want, you can just work around the whole chain or just work in the top of the chain. I just don't think it has as nice of a look, so I'm gonna work in the back bump. So I'm gonna yarn over, twist the chain around so I can see the back of it, and then just insert my hook into that loop that bumps out on the back, just like so. And then I'm just going to work a double crochet and just double crochet in the back bump of each chain across. So I'll be a total of four double crochets across.
Once you've worked the fourth double crochet in the chain, we're gonna go back to our repeat. So we're going to front post double crochet into the next stitch and then double crochet into the next stitch. So in that first stitch to the left of our thumb hole, we are going to front post double crochet, double crochet into the next stitch, and then we're gonna just repeat those last two stitches the rest of the way around for round six. So I'm just coming up to the end of round six. Your last stitch of the round should be a double crochet. Then we're gonna join and chain two. And then we're just gonna go back to repeating round three and four. So for round seven, we're going to double crochet in the first stitch, front post double crochet into the next stitch all the way around. Round eight, we're going to front post double crochet in the first stitch and then double crochet all the way around. And we're just gonna repeat those two rounds. So if you're making the small size, you're just gonna work two more rounds. If you're making the medium size, you're gonna work three more rounds. And if you're making the large size, you're gonna work four more rounds. So we're just gonna continue around and I'll catch back up with you when we reach the last round. So I'll catch back up with you at the end of round eight if you're making the small size, the end of round nine if you're making the medium, or the end of round 10 if you're making the large. So I'm just coming up to the end of my repeat rounds. At the end, I'm going to join and chain one. Now you should be on round nine for the small, round 10 for the medium, and round 11 for the large. I'm just gonna work two more rounds to make a border around the top of my gloves. If you wanted to make your gloves much longer though, you can keep repeating rounds three and four as many times as you'd like. But for this round, I'm going to start my border, so I'm just gonna work one single crochet into each stitch around. When you get to the end of the round, we're going to join and then chain one. And we're gonna work one more round and we're going to work one slip stitch into the back loop only in each stitch around. So just like we worked in the back loop for our cuff, we're gonna do the same at the top here. So just working in the back loop only, slip stitch into each stitch around. Be sure to keep your slip stitches loose so that it doesn't cinch up the top of your glove too much. So for our final round, just loosely slip stitch in the back loop only in each stitch around. When you reach the end of the round, we're going to join to the top of the first stitch. Then you can cut off your yarn, leaving a long enough tail that you can weave it in on the inside. Once you're done weaving in your ends, you can Follow the instructions again from the beginning to make your second glove, and then we're all done. And here are my finished Country Cottage Fingerless Gloves. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget you can find this free written crochet pattern and many more free patterns on my website, theturtletrunk.com. If you enjoyed this pattern, please check out my Country Cottage playlist here on my YouTube channel for many more matching Country Cottage designs. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.